but I want to click the lock to unlock it. But for the most part, I'm going to want it locked. That's the whole point of making a template layer so it's locked in place. But the reason I had to unlock it is that I want to move it so I have that item sitting here, because that's the item I want to create. So I'm going to re-lock that. And I'm also going to double click on the name template, actually off to the side here. And I get my options for that. And one of the options is, how dim do I want to make the images? Well, I'm going to make that 30% just because I wanted it to be a little bit more grayed back. All right, so now I have that, and I'm going to click on this layer, layer one, and this is where I'm going to put my items. Everything else is locked. And I'm not going to worry about layers really anymore. I just wanted to show you when I make a template, when I draw on top of it. And the first thing I see is that to create this crest, I can see that there's this particular shape here, and it's mirrored left to right. And I can take that whole top item, and if I took that shape, and mirrored it down below, I would now have this nicely laid out shape. So that's what, exactly what I'm gonna do with that. I'm gonna go ahead and create this shape that's here. So I'm gonna use the pen tool. I'm gonna create something, not red, let's make it kind of a bright color that we can see. Let's make it this kind of lime green. And I might make the strokes a little bit thicker just so I can see them. I've lost my strokes panel because I closed it. What I can do is come back here to my workspace and say, reset Erica and suddenly my strokes panel is here. Because remember, I had it open, and then I, I, I closed it up. I pulled it off so we could see it, and I closed it. So I'm going to go ahead and make this, let's make this two points thick. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put some rulers on, Command or Control R, and I'm just going to drag down some rulers to the center points of this particular image. And I'm just going to eyeball that. All right, so I'm going to put those there. I'm going to lock those rulers like we've been doing, right-click or control-click to lock those guides. And the reason I want to do that is because, again, if I can select the guides and I start flipping things, I'm going to actually be duplicating my rulers, and that is something I can never figure out until the last minute I realize I've duplicated all my rulers. So I'm going to go ahead with the pen tool, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit more just so I can see this one quadrant here. And I'm just going to go ahead and use my pen tool. And again, I can create these as I go along. I'm going to click so I get that hard corner point. All right, so does everybody see what I'm doing? Hopefully, let's make this that green color. I can't see it. Make it a little bit thicker just so we can see it. Everybody can see that. And then click on there to reverse that direction. Click and hold so I can get that nice arc. I'm going to click again. And let's actually just draw that shape. I'm going to click here, and I'm going to click one more time at the center. Now, the center one, I want to make sure that I don't have any weird angle. If it dips in even just a little bit and I reverse it, I'm going to get kind of a, kind of a weird hump in the middle. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to come to here and get that nice arc. But then what I'm probably going to do is maybe hold down the Shift key, although sometimes I get a lot closer because I, I don't want to actually... Oh, why is it doing that? Oh, I want to click here and hold down my shift key. So I get that straight line. So I know when I flip it, I'm going to get a nice straight line. The thing is, I am going to have a really flat point in the middle. So sometimes I get really close and then hold my shift key, just because I don't want that little dip or the little bump either way. So I'm going to deselect that. And so now I can turn off that one layer. Let's turn off the template layer. So I can look and think, OK, that looks pretty decent. I'm on my way to flipping that over. So I'm going to go ahead and use my selection tool, because I'm not working with the individual points. I want to work with the whole thing as a, you know, as a unit. And I'm going to move this over ever so slightly. And then what I want to do is I want to flip it on that angle, right? So I want to flip it over. So if I just use my reflection tool, which is here, it's this little item here, when I select that, if I just double click on it, and I choose preview, and I flip it horizontally, you notice what it did. It flipped it the right direction, but on its center axis. It just flipped it over. And I can choose copy, but that's great. Now I have two pieces like that. I don't really want that. I'm going to hit undo. And double click on the reflect tool again. And instead, I'm sorry, before I do that, I'm going to tell it where I want to that angle to happen or that reflection to happen. So I selected the reflect tool. I'm going to hold the option key down and then click once. So I'm, and I'm doing it right on the center guide. So it's flipping at that point that I'm clicking, right? So by having that guide there, I know that I'm, I've clicked in pretty close. 
hold down the Option key, and it flips over. You can even see that it shows it what it's going to look like when it flips over. And I want to make sure I hit Copy. So now I have that there. Now I can zoom in on that, and I can kind of see, oh, that's pretty good. I do have that flat piece. But I could have always, at the last minute, gone in some adjustment with the, the pen tool as well. But I just was trying to avoid getting a dip or a bump on there. And I can select these two items. They're two separate items. I can go up under the Object menu and come down to Path and choose Join. And now when I do that, it's one item. Right? So I select this item. It's actually one entire item. So it's all joined together.